the PGA Tour champions return to mid-Michigan to continue the new tradition at Warwick Hills, home of the Allied Challenge. This is NBC25 live coverage of the Allied Challenge from the 19th hole. Sponsored by Michigan International Prep School. Good evening and welcome to the 19th hole, our first installment of 2019. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are live right now on the 18th fairway here at Warwick Hills Golf Club, Golf and Country Club in Grand Blanc Township. Where we will be all week for the second annual Ally Challenge. It is mostly quiet right now, but soon enough fans and golfers will fill these fairways with a $2 million purse on the line. Also, it is a chance to raise money for local charities in mid-Michigan, the two main benefiting organizations this year are Genesee County's United Way and Habitat for Humanity. Now, with the inaugural tournament being such a success, one might wonder what is different this time around. If you are talking what's to offer for fans, there are many new additions, which we will get to here on this edition of the 19th hole. But as far as the course itself goes, you know the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that is the approach on making changes to the 2019 course. Now, the pros tell us they love the long and narrow play that Warwick Hills has to offer. So the course superintendent, Chris Kasimba, says very few details have been altered. The only big difference is the removal of some pine trees due to them being more of an eyesore than even an obstacle. Other than that, no major changes to the golf course. Um, we're probably in a little bit better shape than we were last year going into the event due to the better, a uh, little bit milder summer. Uh, hasn't been as, as strenuous on the turf. So overall, yeah, the course looks really good. Now in total, the course for this year's tournament is playing just under 7,100 yards, 7,088 to be exact. Earlier today, golfers hit the links with some amateurs for a quick pro-am event. For the pros, it was a chance to get on the course a little bit early and strategize for the weekend. And for the amateurs, who were a mix of sponsors and guests of the tournament, it was a chance to play with some of the best that the game has to offer. Tomorrow, more players are expected to arrive in Grand Blanc Township and take the course for a practice round. The range opens up bright and early at 7.30 in the morning. And then tomorrow night, it is the pairing party as players find out who they will be teeing off with for their first round on Thursday. We will be live from the party right here on the 19th hole that starts up at 6 p.m. The course is ready for tournament play, and now we understand, Gina, that the entire club is ready. That's right. Our friend Jonathan Deutsch joins us now live to tell us more about how Warwick Hills transitions from a private club to the center of the Champions Tour for just one week. Yeah, you guys were talking about why players love coming back to Warwick Hills, and that's because of the conditions of the course, but also the course setup, the grandstands, the fan experience. That's all part of the reason why players love to play here. Tournament organizers say setting all of this up was a lot easier in year two than it was in year one. The golfers on the course aren't the only ones who require prep work for the Ally Challenge. Go ahead. We started planning all this stuff uh, 10 months ago. Tournament director Chris Kaufman says setting up for the 2019 tournament has been easier than last year, primarily because they've been through this once before. Setup's predicated on the scale, right? So our scale's bigger this year uh, by about 20%. The scale is bigger in part because of new additions to the fan experience but also just natural growth at the tournament. You start dealing with cable television. All of our suites have cable. Um, you're dealing um, with just our build out, the folks that put all the structures together that we work with here and other, other places as well. So every step of the way, there's, there's somebody that is responsible for everything that's out here, and uh, we work with all of them. And to think, this year's setup will be quicker than last year. The, the, the kind of the conversation about placing it and size and so on, we already had that figured out. So we, we condensed down, um, and so I think our, our build last year was uh, maybe five weeks, and I think our build this year is maybe a little over three and a half. Less than a month to turn Warwick Hills from this to this. Yeah. 
and possibly much more in the future. As the tournament gets more popular, we get deeper into it, um, we'll continue to add more elements to it. Um, I think uh, we'll have needs for it, and it, you know that will require more time to build those out, and we'll, we'll manage, manage to do that as we get further along. Fan turnout already pretty good last year, but they are expecting bigger and better. That's why they've added some extra grandstands and fan seating like the one we're up on on the 18th fairway, 18th green, because they say they expect maybe even 50% more in terms of attendance this week. Reporting live for the 19th hole, I'm Jonathan Deutsch. Thank you, Jonathan. And if you do miss anything, you can always log on to NBC25news.com and download our app. There you can find the final field. It was just announced about an hour ago. Folks, we plan to be your one-stop shop for anything you see here on the 19th hole and also anything related to the Ally Challenge. All you have to do is visit NBC25news.com slash 19th hole. So, uh, Gina, I don't know about you, but it's feeling a little more like football weather out here than it is <laughs> golf weather. It is. I've had a jacket on all day, and for the show, I took it off. And it's a little chilly for day one, especially if you look back at how last year's event went. But we learned that might actually change. Yeah, it was rather hot out here last year, <laughs> a little cool this, this year so far. Meteorologist Elise Dolinar is back at HQ for us tonight. She joins us now with a look at what we can expect this weekend. Elise, how is uh, the forecast shaping up for us? Well, you said it's a little chilly. Tomorrow, we're definitely going to be warming things back up into the 80s. We will be dodging some raindrops. It looks like the majority of the activity, especially through the morning and up to lunchtime, will be staying along the Tri-Cities and North, but we could see an isolated shower possible. But again, warming things up, mainly dry as we head through the second half of your Tuesday. The UV index is going to be higher at a 6, but we will be holding on to a little bit of cloud cover, seeing some sunshine at times as well. As we head through the week, we are going to be dodging some showers as well as some storms. Again, just a chance for tomorrow, but that chance does go up for your Wednesday, even looking at some chances for Thursday and Friday, but the weekend is looking much better. So that's a look at your weather for the week. Back to you guys. All right, Elise, thank you. We are just getting started on this Monday edition of the 19th hole. We'll take a look back at 2018 from the pros to the fun and the impact that it had on Greater Flint. Plus, in tonight's player profile, we will share a one-on-one -on -one interview with Larry Mize. But first, a trivia question for you over the break. Who has the most wins on the PGA Tour champions? Is it A, Hale Irwin, B, Gary Player, C, Lee Trevino, or D, Bernard Langer, who is here this week? We will let you know coming up next after the break when the 19th hole returns. Here is your answer, and if you guessed Hale Irwin, you are right. He has 45 wins on the PGA Tour champions, including seven senior majors. Those were between 1995 and 2007. Welcome back to the 19th hole. You know, there are just four days left until tournament play officially begins. But the stars are already out at Warwick today during the Ally Challenge Pro-Am. Former 1987 Masters champ Larry Mize was testing out the links. Tonight, our very own Jonathan Deutsch catches up with him to talk about coming back here to one of his favorite places on the tour. You just got off the course. Mm -hmm. Exactly how you remembered it? It really is. I mean, uh, I love this place. It's a great golf course. It's in really good shape, and uh, it's fun to play again. It's a course you've had success on. First, take me back to, to 1993 when you won here. What do you remember about it? What sticks out from that tournament? Uh, just, uh, uh, just great memories. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, I played really well, and uh, just, just remember playing well. I remember hitting a poor putt on 18, but it went in anyway. That's what I remember. I didn't hit a very good didn't hit a very good first putt or second putt, but, but somehow it snuck in the hole. Thank goodness. But it's just great memories of uh, wonderful people here, and uh, it just uh, it, was, it was a special win for me. How about coming back last year? What was that experience like for you after you know the first time in a in a decade or so? Well, really, it was kind of like coming back home. You know, you really, I mean, it's always fun to come back and play places where you played on tour, especially places where you've had success and that are really good. And this is one of those. I've had success here, but it's also a really good golf course. The people here are great, so it's just uh, it's a lot of fun coming back here. All right. Lastly, you went and played the new 17. 
today. What do you think about them moving the yardage up 30 to 40 yards? How do you think it'll be different? Well, I was surprised when I got there. I said, wow, we're, we're at the, the way, way, way up. You know, we're hitting, I'm hitting two clubs less than normal. So uh, I'm surprised, but yeah, I think it'll be good. I mean, that's a, that's a really, it's a great par three. It, the, the green has a lot of pitch from, from back to front. So it's really hard to get a good birdie putt. So I think maybe there could be some more birdies this year with the shorter clubs in there, which will be exciting for the fans. Larry Mize was the 1993 winner here. As you heard Jonathan say, he's looking for more success this year. I'm also sure he'd like to cancel out those bad memories <laughs> from last year's Ally Challenge. He finished tied for 63rd place last year. Now, as we look forward to this 2019 edition, we want to take a moment to look back at all 2018 had to offer. From the pros to the fun to the community impact, it is safe to say the homecoming of professional golf back to Greater Flint was welcomed warmly. The inaugural tournament brought familiar faces back to Warwick Hills, from Buick Open champion VJ Singh. There's a lot of good memories, you know. To fan favorite John Daly. It's a golf course. If you play really good, you, you can make some birdies. Who came, but left a little bit early. I love this golf course. There's Fred Couples and Rocco Mediate. Places like this, the old school places that were special, and the people is what you remember. Esteban Toledo and his caddy. The best channel in the whole world, channel 26 or 66. Proudly sporting our NBC 25 and Fox 66 hat all week long. Those big names like Kenny Perry. You're okay, you're okay. You still look great. Even reunited with some of their friends from Warwick's glory days. Not only did golf stars make the return to Grand Blank, but also thousands of fans lining the fairways. 2018 also reignited the buzz on the infamous 17th hole. And of course, there's the roar on the 18th. While pro golf's return brought the fun, the games, it's up. Ooh, that looks good. The drinks and the food. Let's not forget the good it did for the community. The 2018 tournament raised over $800,000 for local charities. You know, equally important to me is the life that I've seen kind of breathed into this community. And of course, the week was capped off with its very first champion, Paul Broadhurst. I had about a 15 foot put um, up the hill and I left it oh, two and a half feet short. and. I heard someone in the crowd shout, yeah, you're not going to win a tournament leaving put short. While the trophy was raised in front of Sunday's crowd, so was the bar for professional golf returning to Greater Flint. And this year, tournament officials actually expect more fans, more fun, and more money raised here in 2019. And all eyes will be on Warwick Hills, all official three rounds will be televised on the Golf Channel. Looking forward to that. We've got more 19th hole coming your way right after the break. We'll sit down with the tournament director of the Ally Challenge. We'll talk what is new this year for golf fans, plus just how welcoming Greater Flint has been. Chris Kaufman joins us live on the 19th hole next. But first, as always, Warwick gets rave reviews. The pros we've talked to all really love playing this course. It plays just over 7,000 yards. In the first hole that some will tee off on on Thursday is, of course, hole one. It is a 567-yard par five. The 19th hole will be right back after the break. The 19th hole, NBC 25's coverage of the Ally Challenge is sponsored by Michigan International Prep School. Andy's Roofing and Applebee's. Golf has a long history here at Warwick Hills, and it includes some of the biggest names in the sport. Did you know, during the 2018 PGA Tour champion seasons, Paul Broadhurst, Vijay Singh, and Steve Stricker tied for most wins with three each. Broadhurst and Singh are playing in this weekend's Ally Challenge, so you'll get a chance to see them. We saw this next gentleman earlier <laughs> in the show talking about uh, the setup for the tournament. Now he joins us live to chat just a little more. Tournament director Chris Croft Kaufman is here, the man behind a lot of what makes this tournament actually run. It is finally here. How is the team feeling? Team's been working hard. We're feeling really great and uh, just excited. You know, you, uh, you, you work um, 
you work for almost a year on planning new ideas, things you want to bring to the community, to the event, and all of a sudden, voila, here we are, and uh, it's going to be a really fun week. Well, we, we know the course is pretty much the same as, you know, for what the fans will remember, what the yeah. players will remember, but you are doing some interesting new things this year. What can the fans expect? I think the fans are going to see some uh, really exciting um, – well, first, we're going to see some exciting golf. We got a great field, one of the best fields of the year on this tour. Uh, so, I, and the players love playing here, and the scoring is usually um, always really brisk. So, um, but in terms of like fan act activities while you're here, we've added quite a few new things. I, I mean, know you're doing some interesting sounding things <laughs> on the 17th. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that's kind of an easy one. I, what do they call it? Low hanging fruit. I mean, the 17 <laughs> has always been a fun place. Uh, fans in this community have enjoyed, uh, you know, uh, going there. We're going to we're gonna make a little noise. Um, actually, we're going to make a lot of noise. Every time there's a birdie this week, um, fans will be able to uh, enjoy uh, their favorite beverage for $2 for 17 minutes. And uh, we think that uh, there's going to be uh, quite a few more birdies this year as we move the tee up. We have a new structure that's behind uh, the, where the players hit their tee shots on 17. The players actually have to walk through the structure to get onto the tee box. It's the first time that's ever happened on this tour. And uh, we just we think that uh, everyone will get a big kick out of it and have a whole, lot, whole bunch of fun with that. Also, too, Friday night, we're going to have a Friday family fun night. Uh, starting at 4 o'clock, you don't need a ticket to come out uh, to, to the golf tournament. And then starting at 5 o'clock, we'll have uh, events with the first tee. Kids are welcome. It's no charge. Um, and there's free pizza for the kids. There's free Fago soda. There's free Absol Pure water. Um, and we'll have live music. And uh, we'll have a shot for a million dollars that three of our lucky guests will have a chance to be drawn to have the opportunity to uh, make a hole in one on 17 that evening for a million dollars. And if you're into helicopters, plan on a helicopter landing uh, on the golf course at night too that the kids will get a big kick out of i mean now you just named a ton of things that people can enjoy but yeah. whether or not it is what this tournament has to offer or the buick open having been here what makes this community you've been all over yeah. for these events what makes this community yeah. so welcoming well i mean you know one thing about golf tournaments there's a lot of numbers right and you know we announced last year uh this past spring that our first year we had um uh, the, the number two best charitable contribution of a first year event in the history of this tour. So all that happens because you got a community here that loves the game of golf, has a great history, the fans love it, the sponsors love it, and they just know what to do with the tournament. I mean, we had over 900 volunteers last year. Uh, we'll have close to the same number again this year. I mean, people dig golf in this community, and we, we'll see it again this week. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Chris. Enjoy the rest of your week here yeah. at Warwick Hills. Now the 19th hole, we're not done just yet. We have much more coming up after the break. What can you bring here to the tournament with you when you come? We're going to take a look when we come back. We are just three days out from the action, and you might start to think about what to bring or what not to bring to the course. And after hearing this, you may even need to make a quick run to the store. Here's the 19th hole's Rochelle Spence. If you're getting a ticket and joining us out here later this week, you want to be prepared. Hey, we've all been there. There's not much worse than getting from the car all the way to the venue and realizing you've got something with you you shouldn't. We're going to help you avoid that. I was the person that was like, just throw it away. I don't I don't need it anymore. We'll throw it. It's not the most fun, and I totally get it. Now tournament coordinator Rochelle Assini is on the other side, making sure you don't have to throw anything away. Among the things you can't bring in, food and drinks. We have food from Andiamo here, so that will be nice and tasty. You can't have a bag bigger than six by six inches, but you can have this one gallon freezer bags or other clear bags smaller than 12 by 12 inches. Folding chairs are OK, but not the bags they come in. And all these rules apply for the Dirk Bentley concert on Saturday. On a scale of one to 10, how excited are you for some Dirk Bentley in your life? I'm like a thousand percent, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. Don't forget the sunglasses. Definitely sunscreen, a hat or a visor, something to shade your face. Um, last year was really sunny and hot, and we're hoping for the exact same weather. Friday through Sunday, all parking is at Grand Blank High School. It's $5, and that money goes directly to the district. A free shuttle will take you to Warwick Hills. Now, when it comes to phones, you can bring them in to take photos and videos, but you can't do any live streams. And of course, with golf, don't 
Don't forget to put them on silent. You can only make calls in designated areas. In Grand Blank, Rochelle Spence, the 19th hole. Very good advice, Rochelle. Thank you. And we know it will be tempting, but you can't ask for autographs along the course either. For a full list of policies and prohibited items, visit the AllyChallenge.com. We will say, though, you are allowed to come up to us and say hi, though. We will be right here along the 18th fairway all week. That is all the time we have tonight for our edition of the 19th hole. Thank you so much for joining us for this Monday edition. Be sure to join us back here again tomorrow, 730. We'll have plenty more for you here from the Allied Challenge. For Mike Wolfolk and the rest of the crew here at Warwick Hills and back at the studio as well, the whole team. I'm Gina Trotman. We'll see you back here tomorrow evening for the 19th hole.